I, I get the sentiment, I do. I'm not going to say I don't understand it, but I just don't think it's anyone else's business. <laughs> and I think it's only really public because people have decided to make it public. Um, I don't think anyone's entitled to have a say on what he does with his money. I think if he's in financial... What if he hired a butler? If he ha I mean, that's his money, that's his private life. I think if he's in debt or he's using taxpayers' money explicitly to fund all of this stuff, then of course that's in the public interest. But yeah. He was wealthy before he got into politics. I'm, I'm sure he'd be wealthy after. Like, I, I just don't think it's anyone's mm, Kevin? business. Kevin? Remember, this is his house in, uh, in North Yorkshire. Not to be confused with his big place in Kensington, London, or his place in Santa Monica in California. Okay, We've got right. to clear that up. <laughs> <laughs> but, he, but he is a multimillionaire because he's a banker and he's married an heiress. Uh, he could probably uh, plug... The, the national debt with these, uh, with these loose cash. The reason it matters and the reason it, it, it'll stick in the throat of some people and it, it makes me slightly sick is because he is Chancellor of the Exchequer who opposed feeding kids in the hungry holidays He's threatening to take away 20 quid a week universal credit to about 5 million families. He's kept statutory sick pay down at £96.35 a week, which is about the lowest in Europe, including for people who have to self-isolate. There's a separate scheme, but most people are turned uh, down on it. That's why I think him... When he is Chancellor and he's about to impose austerity, we know that nurses were rec recommended only a 1% pay rise, which is a wage cut because inflation's double that. That's why it sticks in the throat of because a lot of people. Because he looks out of touch, Dominique. I mean, um, he's, he's um, imposing austerity when? Well, he, well, he is, uh, well, if you're a nurse and you've been hailed and they've clapped you, and you're now about to get a 1% pay rise when inflation's 2.1%. I'm sorry, but that's more than the people in the private sector. No, wages are going up faster in the yeah, private he, sector. That's they not haven't, true. But the, in this uh, pandemic, they haven't received really... They've received barely any support. I mean, people in the private sector have had to lose their wages jobs. Wages are rising like, faster well, now. I think, but, I have not, yeah, but they've lost their jobs and they've not been, they're, been they're able They're rising to work. faster because a lot of low-paid people have lost their jobs. It's kind of a technical... A lot of low-paid people have lost their yeah, jobs, so which again... It's like people are paid whereas, on average Which again, on his... Yeah, whereas people in the public sector... Are being, are being offered a again, pay rise. I, I understand again, that... Again, on his watch, and he's threatening... You know, think, people lost their jobs. He's threatening to take away the 20 quid universal credit uplift. As I get, it. There I are get. some rules of politics, aren't there? And, yeah. and Willie Whitelaw, who was back, you know, back in the day, always said no politician should ever be seen carrying a book, for example. He thought that, was, that made you look out of touch. This is the modern one now. You do not build a swimming pool in your house while you're in the cabinet. End of story. Is it because it just says I don't live like the rest of you? Of course he doesn't. I just think it sounds like a bit of jealousy, and I think no. the, it does. And, and the I'm issues, all right, Jack. The issues. Well, I'm the, all right, Rushy. Yeah, I mean the the issues that you raise, you could have a debate about each individual point that you raise because I, I think you presented them in quite a simplistic way. But you also have to remember that you know, <laughs> like drop. Well, you know, if you like, if you, if, that's it. If you, if, you, if, you, if you give us a month, I'll produce you a hundred thousand word thesis on it. Well, uh, you, you, know, you can have a doctor if you like. Okay. What, 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 I'm, what I'm trying to say is just quickly is, yes. you know, it is a part of a policy package and a manifesto that he has to abide by. We've heard privately that Rishi Sunak has disagreed with the prime minister on a number of different things, even things like furlough Don't. and things like that. So we do have to remember that yes, he's a he's a part of a manifesto, but that doesn't mean he necessarily agrees with everything. Is it, Don't. Get me started on him cutting international aid and four billion off, which even well, again, even his own MPs are saying will cost hundreds of thousands of lives as he swims up and down his twenty metre pool and he plays <laughs> tennis nicely. Uh, you know, stopping to have his hips.